20 migrants tried to board the bus Wednesday morning when it stopped to pick up students here. 32 armed individuals identified by witnesses as Venezuelan migrants reportedly took over a Chicago apartment building late last night. Cops just busted up a gang of illegal immigrants in Minnesota caught kidnapping at least three girls off the street as young as 11. Gangs from South America are breaking into multi-million dollar homes across the country. Hey everybody, we're back. We've got a whole lot to talk about today when it comes to the Venezuelan gang, Trenuagra, the Hells Angels, the feds, and this whole situation because the internet be exploding with rumors and misinformation, so we need to dig into this and see what's what. I also have updates from my video the other day, so we're gonna jump into all of this right now. In case you're not sure exactly what's going on here, in Aurora, Colorado, a violent Venezuelan gang took over several apartment complexes, and the residents of those complexes were begging for help, while local officials and the media all pretended like none of this was actually going on, and lied to the American people about it, until we ended up with video of what was actually going on there. That video went mega viral, and now people are pissed. And tonight, the city of Aurora tells us it is seeking an emergency court order to clear this apartment building. This is all centered around. Today, the Department of Homeland Security confirming that the folks in that, the, those videos are members of the Venezuelan gang, Train de Aragua. In fact, this whole thing is blown up so hard that even the two presidential candidates are talking about this now. Like in Colorado today, Aurora, they're, they're taking over the city. They're taking over. They're going in with these massive guns. Meanwhile, Aurora Mayor Mike Kaufman took to Facebook on Friday to announce the city is seeking an emergency court order to clear apartment buildings where gang violence has occurred, saying, I strongly believe that the best course of action is to shut these buildings down and make sure that this never happens again. Yeah, because just shutting down the building will definitely take care of the problem, right? Mental midget. Meanwhile, people all across the internet have been uploading videos of the Hells Angels on the road, headed to Colorado to save the day, brother. But are Hells Angels from other states gonna come to Colorado to clean up Colorado business? Probably not. And just looking at the videos, you can tell that they're capped. These aren't Hells Angels. This is literally Daytona Beach. This is Bike Week footage right here. Ask me how I know, because I've worked Bike Week for years and years as a bar back. I worked all of the biking events and right Right where that was filmed is directly in between Dirty Harry's and on the other street, Full Moon Saloon. I worked at both of those bars doing bar backing for the bike event. And the entire time that I lived there and worked there, I never saw not one, nor did I meet a single Hells Angel. That is not their territory. In fact, when I showed up and I had 81 support shirts, people told me, you can't wear that here, you'll get killed. So look, even though the dominant MC in Colorado is and has been for quite some time now, the Sons of Silence. The Hells Angels also have multiple chapters right there in the state. If they need to handle business there, it would be someone local that was going to handle it if they decided they wanted to do that and it went through a vote and they all agreed. They were planning on pulling up just to make their presence known, but a few things have changed since then and we're going to get into that in just one second. Everybody caught up? Are we ready? Then let's go! So let's do the good news before we do the bad news. First off, I'm going to replay a clip that I've already played for you guys. I want you to pay close attention to what this dude is saying, especially when it comes to who's behind all this right now. Today, the Department of Homeland Security confirming that the folks in that, the, those videos are members of the Venezuelan gang Train de Aragua. Department of Homeland Security is no joke, and this is specifically one of the things that they should be out here doing. And now we have a DHS task force that is going after these dudes. This task force is going to target a specific Venezuelan gang that is known to not only be here in Denver, but in other cities across the country. So this is potentially good news. This could be exactly what everybody wanted, our government to step up and actually do something about this. But this is also a branch of our government. And can we really trust them? I mean, they are the ones who just let all these dudes walk across the border carte blanche. But if they go in and handle this situation instead of other elements having to go in and handle it, it's going to be good for the community. It's going to mean that there's going to be a lot less bloodshed. And also for anybody to go in and handle it the way that it would need to be handled if our government doesn't means that they're going to be under further scrutiny. They're probably going to get in more trouble than these illegal immigrant 
gangs would because for some reason they're held to a different standard than these people who just walked across the border and started stealing and raping and killing people and shooting at cops. Officers from the Sheriff's Department, ICE, and the Department of Homeland Security blanketed the area. Six people were arrested. Four of them, the sheriff said, were confirmed members of the Tren de Aragua gang out of Venezuela. 750 counterfeit pills, some ketamine, and a stolen car were confiscated. And that's the whole idea. Stop the problem before it gets out of control. And the word that I'm getting now is that there's too much controversy around this and people are just going to sit back and watch and see what happens and determine what they do from there. Which is the smartest of all possible decisions in my personal opinion. We need to all take this as a win. Look, the feds got pressured into doing something that they had no real intention of doing. But now because of the public outcry from the community, social media, and the threat of being made look stupid by criminal elements within our communities, the feds are actually coming in to do their fucking job! Can you just imagine how embarrassing it would have been for them if people that they've labeled as low lives and domestic terrorists went in and saved a community while they just sat there on their hands doing absolutely nothing? And then there's also other opinions from people amongst the big five outlaw MCs in this country, and they have a more indifferent opinion about this whole situation. And when you think about it and you hear them out, it's pretty easy to understand. So I'm going to play you a clip right now from one of my homeboys in the Sons of Silence straight out of Colorado. So I keep seeing all these TikToks, people asking for the, you know, individual organizations in the big five for help. And one of the, you know, the, the organization that I'm a member of has been name dropped several times. People asking for assistance down in Aurora. But... What I got to say about that is, why the fuck should I give a fuck about you people? You know, you run us out of our, you run my people out of your establishments. You, uh, you pull your kids away from us. You hide your purses, you know, whenever you see us. You guys, you guys can't stand us until you fucking need something. Y'all voted for that shit. Y'all deal with that shit. I promise you, me and mine are going to be safe. Honestly, I absolutely feel where he's coming from. I guess that I'm just like built a little bit different. I've always understood that bikers, you're always going to be safe around them if you're a woman or a child. And if you don't disrespect them, they're going to be respectful and cool with you, man. I've never, ever had a problem with bikers, but a lot of people do. A lot of people don't want them in their establishments. A lot of people treat them hella different. So why would they want to come out for the community when the community doesn't show out for them? They actually work to exclude them, even though they do a lot of good stuff to give back to their local communities. Just a few of the causes that bikers are well known for advocating for is fighting against child abuse, fighting against animal abuse, and supporting and honoring U.S. veterans. I don't know about y'all, but those are some of the most important things that I value as a human being, like on a moral level. So when our communities disrespect bikers and treat them like shit, what do you expect from them? You expect them to go to war for you? You expect them to put their brothers in harm's way where they could get killed or they could spend 30 years in prison and not be able to be out here taking care of their family for people who don't even trust or like them? There is a caveat to that though and that's that these MCs are very patriotic. They care a lot about this country. So if these Venezuelans really fuck around too much, they are definitely guaranteed to find out. Them taking over a few apartment complexes in territory that isn't even theirs is probably not going to be enough. But if it came out to an all-out war on the streets, I know exactly where a lot of these dudes are going to stand and where they're going to come into play, especially if it starts spilling into their territory. Because after all, this is America! And myself included in all that. I might not have my Second Amendment rights, boy, but if it comes down to some blood in the streets and they're victimizing my community, we'll see what happens. Because there's one thing that I know for sure, and that's that stand up motherfuckers stand up when it's time. Until then... Let's just let the feds handle the light work. That seems to be where it's standing for right now. Keep in mind that everything is always subject to change. Thank y'all for riding out with me yet again. Till the next one, one love, baby. Be good or be good at it.